Hello everybody. Welcome. I did a transformation to start the video today. I want to make a cool drone for signs of life. It's coming out on Thursday. I'm making all sorts of fun patches now. So, uh... That's what we're doing for a little bit here, so... Somewhere. Isn't it cool that Omega Delay has distortion you can add? Underneath it all is really cool environmental sounds from the library. Let's get a little resonance that this speaks just a little bit more in the mix. Cool. Ah, welcome. Base drone, snake charmer. Trivi. <laughs> Oops. Uh, we start with an environment. We took it somewhere else. This is a base, and I'll fill in all the rest of this stuff when it's not a live stream. So, hello. So we started with one of the audio environmental samples from Cahuita, which was the first place I stayed in Costa Rica with my daughter. But I, I don't think it was this one. What was it? Um, Cahuita House Rain 2. So if we go over here to Cahuita uh, House Rain 2. This was every night it rained at this Airbnb in Costa Rica that we stayed at, my daughter and I, five years ago. And it had a tin roof. So when it rained, it was just insane sometimes. Sometimes you could hear the roof. Other times I was in a part where I was pointing out at the yard and, the, and all the palm fronds and everything so you get more of a smooth. So that's what I started with to make this. It's right here. I put a little bit of a, of a filter envelope on it. And then I found a rain cloud patch, which is synthesis based on those environmental sounds. Then Cape Sire is a cool pad that has environmental inside of the sample again. 
and then I took a synth bass patch from OBXD. I changed it into a unison eight voice monster synth. And the way you do that, if we go init, if you go over here to the little dot, this is where you can load presets, change layer. So we go OBXD right here and I have presets and you can make these yourself. You can make your own folder serum and make your favorite serum patches that you want to be able to immediately call up. And I just went to deep and then I come over here. I change it to eight voices and turn on unison and then do the spread, which detunes each of the eight voices. And then I played around with the filtering and the envelopes and gave it nice slow. This kind of stuff, you know. So that's how you can transform patches. Let me show you this. I, I like to show you guys, remind you of things all the time that are not new, but maybe new to you. If you go to Unify's folders, there's a presets folder right here. And right here is where you have presets for all sorts of things. And there is, is it library subsets? Uh, layer presets right here. So you have audio presets, MIDI presets, and instrument presets. So instrument layers. And here you could say, uh, let's say Omnisphere, just because a lot of you guys have Omnisphere. Let's say Omnisphere 2, right? So now I could go over here. I could right click to call up Omnisphere 2. And um, I'm just going to call up a patch and save it just to show you the process. I'm not necessarily going to be like, oh my gosh, this is my favorite patch in Omnisphere or something. But let's say Phoenix Rising. Right? All you have to do is click this little bullet and go save layer as preset. And here is my Omnisphere 2 folder. And I just need to name it whatever I want. I could cut, you know, what was this Phoenix Rising or something like that? Whatever you name it, you save it. And now if I wanted, I could go, okay, and another one of my favorite ones is Sacred Shrine. Okay, so I go over here and I go save layer preset. Sacred Shrine, Shring, Shrine. Omnisphere 2 folder, save. And so this is a really cool way if you're going to work on an album to give yourself a set of patches you can work with. And a lot of times on an album, it's really important to keep a certain flavors through the album. And this is one way to constrain your options because there are so many options. There's way too many options for us. If you're doing an album project, you really need to limit your scope. And so layer presets is a great way to make a folder which you have only specific patches that you're allowed to use. And then maybe you can add extra patches for color and stuff like that. But for the core structure of your songs, take your favorite plugin, make a folder with your favorite patches, just like I'm doing here. Name them, whether they're the names of the patches or my favorite pad, whatever you want to name them. But now I have these, I can just say select and there it is. So again, if you right click on a patch, reveal in the finder, so it shows you in the finder, and then go up to the unify folder. And then there's presets. And inside of presets, you'll find layer presets. And then you'll find instrument layer presets. You can also do this for effects. If you want to like constrain yourself even more and give yourself specific audio effects, you can go to audio layers. As you can see, there's different effects that you can make as presets for the audio layers. And that would be like for the master effect. This is where you get to um, my master presets for the for mastering. But if you also have an auxiliary effect, that same list of effects also shows up when you click here. It's now looking inside the audio effect folder of layer presets, not the instrument layer presets. We've made separate layers and if you actually had a, if you go here and say, show MIDI layers, uh, hello, uh, add MIDI effects, let's say one by one kick. If you go up here, when you go to layer presets, this is the MIDI effects layer presets. So we have three different folders inside of, oh, and I, I lost it. So let's go, you're going to find her. 
go to unify presets layer presets we have midi effects for the midi effects instrument layers for the green instrument layers audio effects are going to show up when you click this little bullet and you go replace from layer preset for the audio effects both here and for mastering they both share the same folder okay so it's a really cool way to quickly call up presets um, another thing to point out here if you say init go over here and you say replace from layer preset the the dx library of patches these presets each one of these because of how dx works is really unique most nothing else does this but if you say keyboard bank and you open dx you can go to the cart and there's actually 32 presets it it saves a cart in a single patch so i could go through and i just put these together now we have one layer preset right now if you wanted to add another one another layer based on a layer preset click layers and you have the add instrument layers at the very top and this gets you right to those layer presets at the very top, the very first option. So if you go DX and you go keyboard bank three, now it's a whole different set of 32 presets on the cart. And you can make your own layer presets. Go to your DX SysX files that you've downloaded from the internet. Any of these that you select, you can first click here and you get to preview it over here. If you double click, it injects it into the actual cart that will be saved if you save this patch. So it's a really fun way to make layer presets to get yourself going into a more, we have too many presets, right? There's too many sounds, there's too many plugins. Every company is making plugins all over the place. So find your favorite presets that you wanna work with and make them easy to access by using layer presets. Okay, so there you go. Uh, how are you guys doing? Uh, let's see, Hans, you've got good news. What's going on with the good news? Uh, wow, there's a lot of you guys here already. Good day, so good to see you. Uh, hello from Norway. Oh, good. Glad to hear the pops are better. We're actually working on making it even better um, with Mac, Apple computers. Uh, um, yeah, it, it's getting far better. The Juice team has been working to come up with the system that works for these new silicone Macs. And so we're really excited with the progress we're making there. Um, so I have so much to show you guys today. Hello, my name is John Limkul. This is the Plugin Guru live stream. We do this every Saturday for 90 minutes. Just hang out. I've got all sorts of fun things to show you guys. I keep my, my eyes and ears on the web during the week. And then I share what I find on Saturdays. And it's been a busy, busy week. Um, I've got how many in here? There's, there's a free scent. There's a free mastering EQ, which is really nice. There is a free 10 gigabyte orchestral library I'm going to be showing you guys. There's a really incredibly useful, it's not free, but it's very powerful world solo instrument, a world lead instrument. So if you need something, especially that can play legitimate, like world leads with the scales and all the micro tuning and all that kind of stuff, I've, I've got an incredible solution to show you guys. Also, we have unified, I, well, I have unified three libraries this week. So we have those to show you as well down here. We have the Cherry Audio Harmonia is now unified. So all the factory patches, all 355 are, are available. So you can call them up. And you got access to eight macro knobs for controlling the shape of it, but don't forget the second page, I set up the harmonics. So you can... 
and I decided I, I could have broken it into separates, but what I did is uh, each one of these, let's see if I <laughs> find a way to bring this down so I can show you both. Um, each one of these is, oh, darn it. Okay, so we're going to have to just shrink this a little bit for a second. It's changing both oscillator one and oscillator two's frequency settings. I think I can go like this so you can sort of see it. Let's see, shrink it down a little bit more. So when I move these macro knobs, it's changing both of them on on both oscillators. So when you call up a patch. And again, anything that's assigned to the macro knobs, you can easily automate in your DAW. So having access to these, also put pump house. Um, there's EQ settings for, I think this is for our own built-in master effects. Yeah, this is to move flex EQs, uh, EQ settings so you can bring up and down the EQ if you want for the patches as you're playing, if you need to shape it for your, your mix, something like that. So that has been unified also. Um, the other ones that have been unified, I showed last week, Wave Sequencer Thea. That has all 587 patches unified. Um, Thea, for those of you that don't know, is a basically a play-only version of Hyperion, which is a very powerful synthesizer available at Traction.com. I haven't opened it before, so it's taking a second. Oh, that's awesome, Hans. Oh, that's cool. Cherry Audio, right on. So this is a really cool, affordable, I think it's still $39, for 587 really unique patches. Uh, classic to... All the way from that to really cool keys and layered and leads, um, OB leads and all sorts of really fun stuff. And because it is Hyperion is so powerful, multiple forms of synthesis and so forth, uh, these patches go all over the place, sonic synthesis wise. Okay, and then the third library unified is for something new, and we'll show you that first. This is a really, really cool world lead plugin from Taxim. Uh, let me show you the web page for these guys. Oh, by the way, before I do that, I should point out at the humble little plugin guru website, we have a sale going on this week. End. Um, between now and Sunday night, everything is 40% off. It's the end of summer. We celebrate everything here, right? So <laughs> give me a reason for a sale. We'll have a sale. So it's 40% off. Most everything in the library, all the libraries, minus Bliss, Back to the 80s, and the FM8 bundle. I, I didn't want those to be discounted so heavily, but everything else at the site and Unify, of course, is not discounted because Unify is always on sale. For $79, um, we have, uh, yeah, right here, 40% off. So if you click this, this will take you to the product page, which is where we have all, there's like over 80 libraries now available for Unify, Diva, FM8, Razor. Some of my favorite libraries are for Razor. I love the Razor libraries. It's such a cool, unique sounding synthesizer. The FM8 bundle, like I said, it's not on sale. The FM8 power packs, however, are individually. Wow, I didn't realize that, but it's still, uh, that's a good price to do it that way. Okay, so you can get, okay. I, I didn't do the math on that one quite right. Anyway, so it's a sale going on at my website. So enjoy the savings if you would like. This is Toxim World, uh, Solo World Lead Synth. It's uh, retail is $149. It's available for $79. And it is um, 
unified, which means we have all the factory patches saved over here for easy call up. And it goes all over the place in the world categories. Here's the interface for it. So uh, and if you need a specific scale, you can go to the scale page and here they are. I mean, there's um, it's it's really wonderful and it remembers the scale that you set it to even if you go changing other patches now when i go to it still remembered it so it has all these bowed brass After touch for expressivity. Um, I put the reverb so you take the reverb clear off, delay clear off, turn on pump house, and give yourself a, a house sax, <laughs> trumpet. All sorts of accordions and musettes. Let's do this. Open up the scales and set it back to a scale that was more. Uh... But where it really excels and I think is really unique is when you get to some of the wind instruments and stuff. These are just unbelievably. It goes to the nays and all. It's, it's wonderful stuff. I mean, we put these into a track and it's really going to give a unique flavor to what you're working on. So if you're into like, um, hey flute, <laughs> uh, was that a patch up here you wanted to hear? Uh, nay. <laughs> so Thomas Dolby. Peter Gabriel, even some of the new tracks from Jacob Collier have all sorts of ethnic instruments in them. Right, so. I mean, makes me want to like eat at a big round table where you don't get any silverware. <laughs> that's the kind of vibe we've got here. So, is Simeon here? Yeah, well, good to see you all of you. Welcome. So, anyway, this is a wonderful instrument. It's been unified, which means you could choose one of the leads. Go to the load mode and say unify layer and choose other. Actually do it this way. Instead, let's use option and delete that layer and instead say instrument one layer. This way it's gonna continue to load solo on layers instead of unify on layers, right? So I could say, let's use an A. 
And let's use some sort of a brass. Let's go up here to the brass. Uh, maybe one of the trumpets. And let's pan them left and right. And, and then make it more authentic. Go over here to unify to jitterbox. And give each one about 40, 45, 50 milliseconds of random delay. Uh, maybe give one even more randomness. So say jitterbox, let's say maybe like 60 on this one. And let's go here to the third and say jitterbox. Let's say, ah, 70. So we got 50, 60, 70. So now. They're now randomly starting at different start times. And if you really stretch it out there, it's a little bit too far. You don't want to go past probably 100 if you're trying to do something live. But here, let's play a line. And then let's turn off Jitterbox so you can hear the difference. So your hats, they're all at the same time playing. Turn back on. Anytime you want to do an ensemble piece, whether it's big band, instruments, multi-trumpets, multi-orchestral instruments, use Jitterbox because now... They're not playing at the same time ever. All three are randomly different sample starts. It just makes it so much more realistic. Even if you're playing chords with strings and so forth, a little jitterbox gets you away from being absolute perfect MIDI timing because MIDI is sending a, a command to all three layers to play at exactly the same time, right? This allows you to break that digital reality that we deal with by putting Jitterbox in front of any track. You can immediately put on a humanized, randomized timing thing. You can even be on some sort of really cool groove with the bass and stuff like that. Just put it on the bass and put it now. All of a sudden, now the bass player is just a little bit more human. You know, uh, it makes a huge difference on everything. I tend to use this on everything when I'm starting to track parts and I want it to get to be not so perfect. I it's either that or you got to go like do percentage quantizing and a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, it's, it's, it's a little bit more fun to do it this way because it's truly random. Every time it gets that same note, it's a different start time. So if you, if, trust me, if you're doing a big band where the, the sax and the trumpet and the trombone are playing the same lead, I mean... Huge difference. Big, big difference. So, hey there, Wrench Reviews. Good to see you. Um, let's see. Okay, so you guys are doing some text stuff there. And where can I find the VST3 folder? Uh, Planet C, that might be hard to answer here because if you're on a Mac, it's fairly straightforward. If you're on a PC, it's not so straightforward. On a Mac, the audios are found, the plugins are found under library, audio, plugins. Okay. Um, if you go to this page right here and you say um, scan for updated VST3, it will pop up the default list. We've, we've given the default list for PC or Mac. So this will tell you quickly the defaults. But on a PC, Plugins can be in any folder anywhere on your computer, um, depending on where you installed it and set it up. So they might not be there. On the Mac, they have to be in one of these two locations or else the applications can't load them. So uh, aside from our own little special folder of plugins that we've set up away from those so that it's safe. Yeah, so 
You'll go over here to Operations, Scan for New Updated VST3. And this will, don't, you don't have to hit Scan, but you can just see this to see the location and that will tell you where to go, you know, searching on your hard drive for the folder and stuff like that. So that's how you can find that out really quickly. Okay. Uh, I've, uh, Ivar, you're asking a tech question. I found when I use Logic, you might have an old computer and it depends on what plugins you're using and how many tracks you're using of things. So, um, all right. Okay. So that's our start is the tax M solo wonderful plugin for world leads and stuff. If you need something inspiring in that kind of flavor, mm, it is sweet. Uh, and it's on sale. So don't, don't pass that up. Okay. Next up, let's go to, do I have another page with the, yeah, here we go. So there's a couple opportunities to get some free plugins at Plugin Boutique. The W495 is based on a Neumann Mastering EQ. Um, it's kind of been proven that it's not quite an exact clone, but it still is very useful. Um, let me show you what I really like about this. So you go Plugin Boutique. Here's the link. Um, if you go to the video description, hit the like button on your way, please. Um, you can find the link inside of the video description for this live stream to get there. Uh, but let's do this. Let's go to, let me show you something from Mega Magic Guitars Volume 3. Let's go to like one of the BPM things that I did. I think I have some BPM splits here. Uh, split. Uh, state of bliss. I'm just going to check to see which one of these is going to work for what I want to do. Oh, wait, I don't want to. Oops, we want to go normal. So it loads the whole thing. So let's take this and let's go to uh, Signs of Life. There's some new drum kits and new drum grooves. I'm gonna go over here just to the drum kit grooves, not the drums from guitar, but the SC kit. I'm gonna say unify instrument loads so we can say like this. Now, it's a mastering EQ, which means you can put it at the very end of the chain. So I'm gonna click here and go W4, and there it is. And I'm gonna move it in front of Loud Max. So Loud Max will still be protecting the output from distorting. One thing I'm surprised with, uh, there doesn't seem to be an input control. There's an output, but there's not an input. So you might want to also add, um, if you go over here, we have a utility called Gain. Stereo Gain is built in. So I could bring this down, let's say like, you could also bring down the whole mix, but if you want, you could do it this way. Say, bring down three and then shift that in front of the EQ. So the unique thing with this EQ is that it's three bands. And then right here you have, whether it's mono, mid side or stereo for the way that the EQ is applied. And so if you set your bass at mono and you just click here three times or whatever, you can now EQ. Here's without it. Just flushes it up a little bit, but check this out. If you go to stereo, it's so much more solid when it's mono. Hear that? Here's stereo. And let me shift it to mono. Hear that difference? It just makes everything in the low end so much more solid to EQ with the mono for the low frequency EQ. An old school EQ trick is to crank the EQ, find their frequency that's bugging you, that's a little strong, and now you can bring it down. So 
So here's without this EQ. And then with. Hear the difference? It's just so much more solid. And you can actually EQ all three bands independently and it graphically shows you up here make it a mono EQ. I personally like stereo a little bit more. It's really nice. So you have the ability to choose this for each of the bands. So that is a free EQ available at Plugin Boutique. All you gotta do is add it to your cart. I do believe it requires an iLock account. So for those of you that have an allergic reaction to iLock, uh, it might not be the thing for you, uh, but that's their way of choosing to try to protect their products um, so that they are protected. That's what they're doing. So that is in the video description. Uh, hit the like on your way if you haven't on the first time. <laughs> uh, another new plugin to show you guys is a new one called Thump One. And this is a really interesting one. So if you right click and say Thump One, Again, this is also in the video description. This is a plugin that has a number of, it's, it's basically modeling a type of a wave shaping and a and then the uh, super saw oscillator from uh, like some Roland synths or things that have the multi oscillator capability. <laughs> And what's really interesting that I haven't seen many people talk about, I've seen a number of videos where people talk about it and they, they just don't explain what's unique about it. What's unique is that there's a little triangle right here to each of these groups of parameters, which has an envelope attached to it so that you can actually do all sorts of cool things for different things or modulated in different ways. You can add breakpoints. Go to drive, double click. Double click here, add another. So it's not just the fact that it has these cool parameters and blah, 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 but it's the fact that it has a really interesting interface for modulating any of these parameters just by double clicking and adding a segment. Here's your different wavetables to choose from. And if you go through the patches, it is a surprising number of places. And I talked to the developers a little bit because typically when a company does something like this, they have something in their back pocket they're going to bring out and sell you, right? And actually, these guys haven't done that yet. They just wanted to see if this would be something that people were interested in. The, their uh, response has been like really great. They're really excited about this. So they are going to be developing some cool things. Uh, but this is a great start. They've done some other things, I believe. I, I don't have the whole history of what they've done, but check this out. It is a really cool synth. It can do the dongs and the bass thing. But if you go to the list, they've got presets and percussion, leads. Great sounding. It's got all sorts of potential to go some really cool places. And again, go to punch. Go to the level if you want to make it have a little bit more of a snappy transient. 
double click to add additional segments anywhere. So you can do some, it's, it's very sweet, very well done. Doesn't have effects. It doesn't get into all the like, you know, colorful things in that regards, but we have lots of effect options. Very cool colors. So, highly recommended. It's the link to this is in the video description. Again, I'm not gonna be post pasting them into the chat just because I don't want to keep having to do that. But uh <laughs> I love it. You guys are talking all sorts of good stuff. <laughs> you know, it's, I love that. There's like multiple universes of conversation going on at once. All right. So that is the, the second. And I covered the unified libraries fairly quickly already. So we're, we're moving along nicely. Good. Good, good, good. All right. So the third thing to show you that is free is a $149 orchestral sample-based library. It's crazy. Unbelievably cool. And it's one that you've probably heard the name of before. Uh, Miroslav has been around for a very long time. This is actually the second generation of Miroslav. Um, if you go Philharmonic, it's Philharmonic 2. It's released through um, IK Multimedia. Oh, don't do that. Um, now you'll notice that it's not, <laughs> it's not a native, oh, it, you might get some interesting prompts. I should probably save this for Shane. So let me put this over here. Shane likes to see when things like that happen so we can figure out what happened. So I'll keep that open and get that to him later. Uh, if we go over here, Philharmonic, that could be because of something inside of Thump One since it's a new plugin. Uh, sometimes they do, you know, rogue memory leaks and so forth. I don't know what the details are. But Miroslav's uh, Philharmonic. To CE, the classic edition, which is a smaller version of the full version that you can buy for $100 on their website, which is something like, I think it's like 28 gigabytes or maybe even more than that. This is 10 gigabytes. So it's, you're getting lots of gigabytes. Uh, it has strings, brass, it has the Philharmonic and orchestras and some wonderful stuff in here. Uh, there's woodwinds, there's chromatic, there's even a grand piano, which is really nice. You can call up a piano to play. And it's free. You have to join their newsletter, which tells me my guess is that Philharmonic 3 is just around the corner. Because this is not Apple Silicone compatible. As you can see, Shane, by the way, everybody give a mad shout out to Shane. Thumbs up, Shane. He's here replying to your tech. He is the gentleman that I partnered with that is my software partner that wrote the code for Unify. I, I can't write code. I had the idea for Unify, uh, but it's Shane that made it become a reality. So thank you, Shane, of always. So Shane figured out how to piggyback on Apple's really clever audio unit trick on the Mac to get non-compatible, non-updated for silicone VST plugins to work in silicone applications. And so you can load Philharmonic into Logic, even though it's not Apple silicone compatible if you're on a new Apple computer, by using Unify. And it works just fine. If you go to like the, the mixed orchestra and all this stuff, these are really wonderful things where you can say cinema strings and Shane is the maestro. You got it. So there's all these presets as well as the strings are in separate sections. Uh, same with the brass, they have solos, so, you can, so solo violin. Um, 
I mean, it's a complete orchestra. There's over 70. In this is something you all should want to have access to. It's wonderful. Now, I did look at trying to unify this and turn it into one of like our BBC things. Uh, the problem is, is that there doesn't seem to be streaming. So it's loading all this into memory. And the preset that I made after I saved it, it refuses to load. So I will show that to Shane and see if we can look at what we could do to maybe make it work. I don't know why. I'm guessing it's memory related. I'm on an Apple Studio, which has a limited amount of memory. And I was not able... I. I regret terribly not buying more RAM when I got this computer because it's woefully underpowered for me when it comes to the RAM. Processors are great. Everything is great. Uh, but I think it's 32 gigabytes, and that's just not enough memory for these computers to do what they need to do quickly, especially when it's loading all of this kind of stuff into memory and it has to shuffle it around. So you do have something like this violins. You'll see that gives you a limited keyboard range. Like it doesn't play down here in this part of the keyboard. What you can do is you can go over here. There's up to 16 parts you can play at once. You bring this to MIDI channel one, highlight the second layer, and now you could go to, instead of violins, let's go to cellos. Let's load those. And then go to three and go over here to number three. And let's say the basses and double click. So it can load and layer them inside of its own plugin. And quite honestly, because of the fact, if you scroll down here to the Philharmonic section, there's all these mixed or orchestra setups. Here, let's do this. You have to go to Edit, <laughs> to Multi, and here's where you can get to a new option if you want to reset everything. So if you need to reset, um, there's I couldn't find an init button anywhere to click and stuff like that. But if you go over here, go to one, make sure you're highlighting number one before you click. Otherwise, it's going to be looking at this MIDI channel that's listed right here. Um, they have all sorts of really nice combinations of everything in the library. So you really don't need a unified library. You know, with the BBC for Spitfire Audio, that there was none of these. There was nothing except for just separate sections. And so the, the fact we did the BBC Discover Station library makes sense because you could not call up something where it would play. It's got choir. I mean, this library is insane. It's really, really great. Uh, if you go harpsichord, great harpsichord. Go to the pipe organ. Uh, the cathedral is just... Right? Their knobs are horrible. The, the ma majority of the volume change is in like the, the last 60, 40%. So and it's like you've got all this range here for that last little bit of audio. And it doesn't even go away to zero. I still hear it. So not the way I would have designed it, but you know, it is. Make sure you play the organ flutes. These are wonderful. It's got that great flute shift in it. Right? Now, on choirs, look at this. Female, male, and mixed. So you can say the choir multi-mixed. There's classical guitars, which are nice. They don't have a lot of samples and they don't round robin. So if you're trying to play, luckily it has velocity switching between a softer sample, which sounds nice. And then we play harder, you get the same. Eh, eh, eh. But if you put it into a mix, you're probably not going to notice. Remember when playing guitar, roll. Guitar players can't. 
They can't play like that. Roll, usually, and you can roll both directions. So they roll from top to bottom or bottom to top. Sounds so much better than. So how you play these instruments, especially when they are accurate samples, gets to be even more important than it was before. Percussion, there's all sorts of full percussion, menu maps, there's snare drums, timpani, which is great to have the whole um, all A. If you go to the full percussion maps, this is where you have like the There's also chromatic percussion like celeste, crotales, triangles. I mean, it's got everything. It's really, really well done. So I was really, really impressed. Wanted to share this with you. You all should get this for free. Just join the mailing list and unsubscribe after they send you an email if you don't want to stay on the mailing list. But this way you get this library, $149 library for free, right? Uh, one other thing to show you, if you want to get into more crazy sound design things, you can do some fun stuff with this. Um, if you go over here to the edit page, they have a really interesting pitch shift. Um, now, this is going to break the sample, so it's not going to sound nice. All right, Shane. Good to see you, my friend. Cheers. We'll talk soon. There goes the maestro himself. I can't wait to show you what we're working on. It's really uh, good stuff. So if we go pitch shift and then go over here to the, to the time. You can get these to become broken. So if you need weird textures, people talking, you know, like in a sci-fi film or something like that, you can take these wonderful strings um, to some rather... Uh, You'd have to probably sample that and turn it into audio. I don't think you can automate those parameters. Uh, but there's all sorts of fun things. There's a filter. There's different envelopes, the velocity control. Right? So you have all sorts of fun things to do there. Also, let's call up something like the brass drama, which is really nice. If you go down here, there's an effects page and there's five different effects. And what you do is you choose one, two, three, four, or five, turn it on, and then you choose what effect you want it to be. And there's all sorts of stuff. There's EQ and dynamics, there's modulation, which includes phasers and rotaries and all sorts of great stuff. Reverb and delay, there's convolution reverb. So if you wanna get into a concert hall or a theater, Really nice. If you want to just go to the regular reverb, you can get into some really cool, like ambient spacey stuff. Actually do this, go to, I think it's the hall reverb that I played with that I was really impressed with. Uh, go here, choose hall reverb. Yeah, so. And because it has five, that means you could choose different effects. Turn it on, go over here. Let's have it do a really slow phaser. More stages. And it seems to be from left to right in order. 
So we could go after that. Let's add another reverb after that. So we go reverb. Uh, there's tape echo. There's spring reverb. Just all sorts of options here. It's really wonderful. So So if you need really cool, interesting, dreamy ambiences, you can get to some really cool places with this. So it's not just for orchestral. And I, I surprised they, they have these ethereals, but they're Pretty, pretty tame in, in, in my. It's, it's not really the ethereal I was imagining <laughs> for it. But again, you have so many options to work with and it's really easy to add as you saw. Uh, are ever planning on porting to Linux? I don't think so. Um, there's not that many plugins for Linux. Uh, it's just another thing for Shane to have to manage. And he is hands terribly full already. <laughs> so, um, uh, is that you know, really reliable? Um, well, this plugin has been out for over five or six years, so I would think it's pretty stable. Um, I, I would test it before I got to like doing a whole film project with it to make sure it works. Um, but from my testing here, I have not done a lot where I like save patches and recall them uh, because of just there's a lot of stuff going on here. But it's something that I would expect to be reliable. Um, or else it would have gotten <laughs> mentioned and hopefully fixed a while in the past. Uh, it does take up memory from what I can tell because it's not, I, I don't think it's doing this, I don't know, but it doesn't seem to be doing a streaming type of a way of working. You know, you double click to <clears throat> load something. <clears throat> There's a <clears throat> certain amount of time for it to load. Anyway, it's free to play with and work with and see if it will work for you. So. That's my job is to just point these things out to you and let you know what's going on, get you inspired up, get you some new sounds. If you want new sounds, there's all these, so many options for new options to work with. I just try to kind of like cherry pick the ones that I think are more appropriate without getting too overwhelmed, right? Uh, let's see. Let's see. Have you considered offering a subscription? I've considered it, but I really don't want to do that because the data, these, you know, with Unify, I don't know how we would do that for like, you know, we actually had someone this week that wrote in wanting to, um, maybe you're the same person. I don't know. Uh, no, it wasn't. Andrew, Andrew, it wasn't you, I don't think. But someone was asking if they could buy like just a set, like 20 patches from a library. And I don't, I don't do that. And, um, I'll explain what I explained to him. For for one thing, you don't know what 20 patches you want. So if I was to pick out 20 patches, uh, that's going to be the uh, 20 different patches are different than what you're going to want from the library, right? So we'd have to make it somehow so that you, and without playing the patches, you know, you can look at a library with lots of presets. You know, you can go to like Signs of Life SC, right? It has all these pads. But if I was to just pick out my favorite pads from this, you know, you might like this. Whereas everybody else would think, I don't have any idea how to use that as a pad. It's not like, I can't use it for Peter Gabriel. I can't use it for air in the air tonight. You know? No. That, so if I was to pick out the 20 patches that you're going to buy, or else if you were hearing this, you know, you can tell if something's going to work when you play it. And until you play it, it's 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 really hard to tell. Also, a lot of times you buy one of these libraries, you're in the middle of working on a project, and you're just going through and you're... And you're 
and you come across this patch that you'd never played before, and you go, oh, that's perfect for this song. You wouldn't have that if you only bought like a dozen patches of a library or if you bought three that were your favorite patches. So my model is to make the libraries cheaper than a steak dinner and better because you get everything in the library that's in the concept that I wanted to present. And now you have a whole universe to explore instead of cherry picking. I'm, I'm just not a fan, you know, <laughs> of cherry picking because my cherries is different than the cherries you want, right? So it's to make the libraries affordable, make them creative and inspiring and unique and focused on a certain thing so that I'm trying not to like, you know, overdo the same thing over and over again. There's no other library I've ever made to date that's synthesis sounds based on bugs powering the synths, you know? These all have ambient sound design elements. But that motion and stuff that you hear, that's because it came from one of these environmental sounds up here. Right? So in this library, I give you all the environmental sounds as well as these cool pads and textures and stuff. And if you listen in the background, you hear like, it sounds like a rain texture. No other library I have does this, so. Crazy, crazy stuff. So that's that's my model. I'm, I'm not a fan of cherry picking. It's more, I want to present my artistic vision or else one of my producers that their artistic vision of a library and a certain theme and so forth. You know, we're artists. This is my art form. I, I decided not to make solo records. Instead, I decided to make libraries of sounds. It's still my art form. This is my art. And I'm sharing it with you and giving you guys an opportunity to work with it. So it's not one of these things where a lot of these websites just want it to be like this blip, 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 impersonal and you just choose the, you know, I, no, I'm sharing my art with you. That's what this is about. So uh, it's, it's not about giving you a great deal for five samples and discount and all that kind of crap. I, I'm not interested. Uh, and if you are, if that's what you want, there's Splice and there's all sorts of places you can go that do that. And you have no personal connection to anybody. You don't know who made it. You don't know anything about them, you know, and I'm I'm just not about that in any way. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> uh, so that's that's kind of this is this is where I'm at with this. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, any other questions? I'm going to cut this a little bit short. Um, yeah, on the, the dice button for randomly choosing the patches in the library. I'm going to make this a little short. Uh, one of my favorite football teams is playing right now, and I want to go watch it. So <laughs> not to not to be uh, cut short on purpose, but I, if, if we can wrap up everything and be in a good place. Um, I made a really cool patch. By the way, there's a song if you guys want to be inspired. Um, I, I won't play it because... Um, I don't want to get copywritten and all that kind of stuff, but, but oh, of course now it's going to play and all that stuff. But this track by Jacob Collier is just unbelievable. Jacob Collier is, there's, there's nobody on the planet that is doing what Jacob is doing. And Little Blue starts with this really cool synth sound. And I modeled that for the Signs of Life library. So if I go over here, BPM pads, uh, chasing butterflies. It's a uh, this kind of sound. But I added arpeggiation and stuff. You play just one note, and you take down the reverb, and you have to turn off random panning because I have random pitch. It's very similar to the beginning of this track, doing this kind of thing, right? So it's very similar, but I made it so you could do more. It's got a random pitch. And actually, this is a cool trick. Let me show you this trick. So I've got uh, this layer 
which is using one of the samples. I moved the sample way late and really short and fast attack and a random start time. And really, it can be like this. But I made it short so it becomes like a click. And then the other sound is, is a click from the, the full library, just one of the woody pops, but I have it set to unpitch so that it's just playing the same pitch across the whole keyboard, right? And then I chose really high in pitch. And then I have LFO set to 16th notes with the sample and hold. So as I bring this up, listen to the pitch. It starts to dance. So when I layer that with the synth sound, this cool little attack that goes over, and then you can add the effects. Check out that track. It's just a beautiful song. I, I love Jacob and what he's doing. There's also you have to check out Well. Oh, the other thing is right here, this Logic Sessions breakdown that Jacob did of Well, which is this rock track. I mean, it's wonderful to see, you know, there's like 200 tracks in the song. How he built it, he goes through and he tears it apart and he this shows- planets are only home. But if you, he goes through the whole thing, showing his vocals, the audio effects, the effects that he's using, what he did. And he just talks about what he did. <laughs> Mad genius work with composition, arrangement, everything. Very inspiring. Inspires me all the time to hear what he's doing. Uh, I got to see him live here in Portland a while back. It was really fun. Really good stuff. So. I would like to point that out for you guys if you want some inspiration. Uh, if you join the Facebook Plugin Guru page, by the way, um, I shared links to that. We have a really cool group on Facebook, which is going to load up. Um, if you go over here to the Unify Power Users group, uh, if you join this, I share, people share all sorts of things about what's going on. Uh, there's some nice contributors like Glenn that loves to post about new plugins. Um, we have questions all the time. All that kind of stuff happens. I share when I unify libraries. So you know what? So join that Facebook group if you would like. Um, cool. Uh, happy ball. Oh, Paul. Yay. Happy birthday. My daughter's birthday is in six days. So yay. Happy birthday. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mike. I appreciate that. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. Jacob, Jacob is just not to mention. Yes. Great, great, great. Well, I'm glad that everything's working for you guys. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a great week on, on a personal level. Um, I got to remodel my bathroom at my house <laughs> and it looks so nice. I'm so happy. Um, also, last night I got to pick up. I was in a car accident about three weeks ago. And uh, it was one of those accidents where, you know, by the grace of the man upstairs, I did not injure myself. I, if, if there would have been a car coming, I went into oncoming traffic. Uh, someone did a U-turn in front of me on the highway at 65 miles an hour. And my car didn't do so well. Underneath, everything was ripped out from the accident. But last night, I picked it up. And it's repainted. And it's wonderful to have Harvey back. That's my friend Harvey. So say hi, Harvey. Uh, they actually sent me pictures. If you guys want a little... <laughs> when they are painting it, when they were working on the insides of it to get the body... They had to take the, the original frame underneath it out. It's like looking at a surgery for like a heart transplant or something like that, right? 
but they got everything fixed. There's a dealer here in in the, in the area that they're uh, Thompson Auto Body. Uh, it's a little husband and wife team. I, they're just the cutest couple, and they did just. Uh, I'm so happy. So I'm in a really happy place. Uh, I got one week left. Uh, coming out Thursday is is going to be the Signs of Life Special Edition Library. Uh, it's coming out so nice. We've got some really cool patches beyond what it. Uh, what's going on here? Let's see if I go refresh the library. Uh, Plucky Earth Dance. Um. Coral Club is really awesome for the... Right? So there'll be all sorts. I'm going to make a whole bunch more bonus patches. There's also these really cool drum kits. So you have... From Mega Magic Guitars Volume 3, we did these drums from guitar. I had made a kit for Signs of Life five years ago for Contact. And I took those samples and put them into this Unify as a drum kit. And they're very unique sounding drums. I used the timpanis and stuff like that. And what's fun is I layered these and matched them with the drums from guitar. So if you go up to drums guitar number 20 and add this, they're made to work together. And then I, the combos are the two together. So if you go to low fee, Solo. Oh wait, I'm on unified layer. I'm gonna go like this, like this. Uh, here's acoustic techno. And what I'm gonna do, I haven't done this yet, but each of these 25 combo grooves is gonna be a completely different production. Like, let's do one live right now. Let's this one. Let's do this one. I have some tools in place. If I resize over here, you can see there's a pump house. If I bring pump house up, I have it set at the gate. This is a really cool technique where I have it shaped to cut down and then it's on a one beat cycle. So I'm controlling what the sound can do in one major or one beat. So if I bring this up, listen to the snare. I can totally shorten it. I can also go over here and customize it a bit. Right? Let's see, do I want this to be a different pitch? It goes chorus. Maybe I want a little pitchy G on it, so I can go to, uh, let's go over here to custom shape. And we go one shot and unilateral for the shape and now pitch I can find the sweet spot. Let's bring it down. could also go to the coloring and stuff if I wanted to like maybe took this and put it into something like a ring mod or something like that or let's see what else do we have here would be fun uh, transient would be fun to shape with other ways to shape it And maybe this, 
Maybe I want it to dance a little bit. So I go over here, I could say notes, 16th notes. Now, if I wanted to, I could go over here instead of this, I could say a custom shape. So I could shape the LFO exactly how I want. Double click to put one here and like this. And now I have a triangle shape like I had as a preset. But now I can go in and I can make it more shark fin. This makes it a little bit slower going up and fast and longer. It's, um, let's see, it's gonna have more in the low range before it goes up and then it's gonna quickly come down. So it's gonna have a little bit more of a boom. Actually, it's gonna stay up high a little bit longer because it's expended here and shorter here. There. And I could also use this for the amp. So I'm gonna do stuff like this. Like also one other thing that'd be really fun is Google's noise box. Now let's hit high pass filter. This makes it become like a high exciter. Which if I listen in the mix, Here's if it was full, like most distortions you call up, it's like this, right? It's doing everything. Well, with this, you can have high pass filtering before the distortion. There, save. So each of these 25 will be combo wise because you can go to the groove knob for any one of these and go through the whole list just by moving the groove knob. So I wanna make it so that it's worthwhile to have 25 patches. You know, I could play with the vibe. I could go in like, this might be the one that's fun to play Tooney down. Make them more world. I'm, I'm trying to think like more like, not just wow, you know, I mean, the first one will be wide open and everything like that, but this, let's see, and I've got a delay and a reverb. The delay on this is really fun because it's, it's a feedback delay. So I can go to the reverb. Call out response. Cool. So we did two. We're only gonna do one and look what we've done two. So instead of being full and big and stuff like that, each of the 25 are gonna be different productions because you can call it up. Now I'm playing this one, Heat Waves. this up yeah heat waves so with this setup of production that's the same thing as this just with programming of the envelopes and so forth go up one <laughs> so good stuff so anyway that will be coming on thursday so i'm very excited the other thing to show you is that we've now looped all of the 192 kilohertz versions of everything. So it's all set up so you can call up any of these. Uh, just to give you a quick comparison, here's the Cahuita house at 48 kilohertz. This is the Omnisphere version. 
that I released five years ago. And when you play it down four octaves, you hear aliasing. Well, the high quality 192 kilohertz samples, now when you play down low, don't hear any aliasing. So here's 192, or here's 48K. Hear the aliasing. Here's 192. Smooth, beautiful. And so that's gonna translate all the way up the keyboard. Even when you're playing up here where they almost sound identical. It still is different. There's a difference in the, the, the details. There's four times the data inside of it, right? It hasn't been chopped up into one fourth of the bandwidth of the bits that are allowed to be stored. So any of these samples that you go to that have an HQ, if you play the 48 kilohertz down low, and then you play the HQ, big difference. So those are done. Also, I've looped all of the textures. These are like up to like two or three minutes in length for some of these. Of the full length audio files of stuff. It's really, really fun. Cool, 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 cool. All right, let's do our shout outs while this really weird sound plays. <laughs> shout out from Portland. Yes, it's very unique in sound. Over and out from Mike. This is what I love is how everybody's everywhere in the world. It's so fun. Well, it's good to see you all. Thank you for joining us. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Andrew. And happy birthday. Happy birthday to whoever's son is turning 30. I, I can't, I think it was you. <laughs> so good to see Tim here. Tim Dale, good to see you, my friend. Prayers for your wife. Yes. Great, look at that, Minneapolis, Germany, UK, France, you're all in the same place, all at the same time. It's beautiful, beautiful thing. Love it, love it, love it, love it. All right, well, peace to you all. I hope you're inspired. Uh, again, even though the Philharmonic 2 library is Intel only, it will play in silicone thanks to Unify. So yay to Unify and Shane. Thank you, Shane. Um, Thank you, Taylor, my assistant right there, popping up the tech support. If you have questions on anything uh, Plugin Guru related, unify support at pluginguru.com. And again, I have a sale going on right now. So if you go to pluginguru.com, uh, let's uh, right here, 40% off virtually all of the libraries. So if you need some new inspiring patches from artists that have chosen this as their way of expressing themselves instead of making records, uh, there's Fred Nongat, there's Tim Dale that are both here in the chat. So good to see you both. Um, my gosh, there's, uh, Matthew Sauer in Germany, uh, Jason Schopfer up in Canada. There's Bob Dedes that did the Back to the 80s library that we just released along with what, uh, so many, he's done three libraries for us. He's in Greece. Uh, it's worldwide. Oh, and one more thing to point out. I wanted to uh, share one other artist that is making incredible libraries and is in a very challenging... Oh, you're going to do that to me. Okay, so let's go like this. And that would be our my friend, my new friend, Max. Uh, Max is from the Ukraine, and he could really use some support uh, because he's in the middle of a war and needs to take care of his friends and family and has some really interesting sample packs that go over all sorts of really, really cool uh, libraries and sounds and productions and so forth. 
as well as a really cool virtual instrument he recorded where he's taking the sounds of war and turning them into musical instruments to play. So Swords to Plowshare is a library that he has done uh, that is really, really inspiring as far as creative over five gigabytes of stuff. Works with the contact player. Uh, so shout out to Max at maxmovement.store. Here, let me give you a link in the chat and I'll put it into the video description as too. I almost forgot. I'm so glad I didn't forget. Uh, but please, please support if you can Max and his just really challenging situation he's in. He's he's in Kiev and uh, it's very challenging. So unite for all of us. Absolutely. So if you can support our friends that are in need, this is a great way to do so. And it goes directly to people that need that support. And you have some awesome sounds to be inspired by as a result. So shout out to Max. Okay. So cheers to you all. We will see you next week. Uh, we'll be playing with Signs of Life. It will be out and about and it'll be good times. So cheers, everybody. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next week. Okay.